so 2021 has been a very bad year for Overwatch. What, did you expect me to follow up on that? It's just been really bad. I think most of us did not expect a sequel to show up this year, but when news broke that a release in 2022 doesn't seem likely anymore, things began to fall apart in a hurry. And honestly, most of us could feel it. Players leaving the game en masse reflected not only in a dwindling viewership on Twitch and YouTube, but also in the queue times of most people who don't happen to play smack dab in the middle of the skill-based matchmaking system. It's not that the game is bad, per se, unless you're playing ranked, in which case may Aaron Keller have mercy on your soul. It's just that we've been playing the same game for years now and are starving for something new. Don't believe me? Are you trying to tell me that you don't get excited when you land a massive fight winning ultimate on a hero you don't have a lot of playtime on? Do you mean to say that you don't feel that rush of adrenaline that comes with denying a remake at the risk of getting stomped? Have you stopped cheering at your Reinhardt when they charge an enemy Mercy off the map? When you land a sick rebound as Junkrat? When you hold the Roadhog off the map as Orisa? Or when you eat that Blizzard as Diva? Overwatch is a game of extremes. The extreme joy that comes with pulling off cool plays, but also the extreme frustration that comes with losing a match at no fault of your own. And that hasn't changed, new content or not. With that said, the content creator experimental patch was the most fun I've had in Overwatch in years, which makes me ever the more hopeful for whatever NDA thing is supposed to come in 2022. All we have to do is hold out a bit longer. And until then, you can have an amazingly fun experience in Overwatch right now with a very simple trick. Don't wait for new stuff, rediscover what's already in the game. In essence, don't look at what Overwatch doesn't do well, look at what it excels at. And today, I have decided to show you what that looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, to end off this year, we are going to venture to a place yet undiscovered on this channel. Welcome to Competitive No Limits. I'm sure many of you remember the olden days of Overwatch, in which we could stack as many heroes as we liked. Well, with the introduction of Competitive No Limits, we can rediscover that chapter of the game's history and probably realize why 222 eventually came to being. This fateful match of Overwatch, played on Christmas Day, comes courtesy of Lightning Lord on my Discord server, dubbing it the best game he's had in a year. I would make a joke about how I have better things to do over the holidays than play games, but my Christmas Eve was not looking all that different. Regardless of that, we're here to have fun, and by Jeff, fun is what we will have. Our squad of six Lucios roll out a spawn, ready to take their fight to the red team, and naturally they had the speed to get there first and foil the enemy's attempt of getting to the capture point. But our friends will learn in a hurry that it takes more to win a fight than just being fast. Their opposition had no intention of falling for their cheap tricks, and even in the midst of an army of frogs, they found ways to get eliminations. Lucio might be one of the best stolen characters in the game, but the double rota composition sites with their enemies was also very good at stopping that very thing. The first cap went to the red team, revealing obvious weaknesses in our hero's approach to this match. The plan was unconventional, and as such, more unconventional strategies would have to be used in order to make it work. Part of that plan was to never fully reset the fight. The blue team believed in being able to control the chaos and putting constant pressure on the capture point while costing them some manpower also allowed them to find openings to exploit. The two Roadhogs, however, seemed fairly unimpressed by any of that. Their feet remained anchored to the ground as they continued to hook, line, and sink our hero's hope of winning this round. Lightning Lord successfully baited two defenders to the edge to confirm at least some eliminations for his team, but as it stands, that only feels like a drop in the bucket. 45% capture progress turned into 60, and yet only few eliminations went the way of the blue team. King Rob decided to take one for the team and swapped off Lucio, but the rest of his friends had to find a way to get him onto the objective. And this is where our friend Bastion had a brilliant idea. You see, with all that mobility, Lucio players rarely have a reason to approach the objective via the bridge. The red team was focused on the windows as well as the white room as those were heavily contested by our heroes. In this moment, Bastion decided to yeet on over from the back to assassinate the red team's only healer and begin tearing away at their defenses. Silver Fox was obviously caught by surprise when they were attacked from behind, but the assault was now in full effect. They were surrounded by an army of frogs that nibbled away at their HP until nothing remained. What started off as a chaotic swarm attack was now laser focused on removing members of the defending team one by one. But what mattered now was not how they got the objective, it's how they are planning to hold it. With a whopping 97% secured for their enemies, our heroes knew that they were bound to strike with full force to get it back. And that is exactly what happened. While Sings was lurking in the shadows, Silver Fox took to the sky to show the blue team that their victory was nothing but a fluke. Their EMP made sure that the Gravitic Flux could not be cancelled and no beat drop would come to save the day. When the dust settled and Control went back to the red team, all frogs had been exterminated without any chance for a comeback. Is what I would say if Matthew didn't heroically throw himself on the objective with a solo beat drop to keep their dreams alive. Lightning Lord rolled out a spawn like he never rolled up before, and while his beat drop came to 
too late to save Matthew, the capture point remained contested. The red team was obviously annoyed as they were craving for an end to the stalling. Every elimination now would cause an increased spawn timer for the attackers, but that seemed to matter little in the face of a speed boost and sheer tenacity. Silver Fox would not fall for the bridge play twice and made it their job to hold their opposition back. And as much as I can understand their train of thought, they must have forgotten that while Sigma can hover, he definitely cannot fly. The red team had sacrificed sustain in favor of more crowd control, seeing that as the only way to stop the frogs from endlessly contesting the objective. But that also meant that some members of the team had no means of recovering HP, meaning it was only a matter of time until they fell. And since Silver Fox was no longer protecting the bridge, King Rob could safely and swiftly rejoin the battle in order to turn the tides. Establishing the Rotok differential, while optional, must have felt very good in that situation. It was obvious that the red team reeked of desperation. They needed ultimates to end this fight, but those ultimates would not find the desired effect when used haphazardly. Without a big ultimate combo to lead that charge, our heroes had no trouble picking their opponents off in the most satisfying way possible. Despite their abundance of crowd control abilities, half the team would find themselves at the bottom of the tower as the blue team began catching up to their capture percentage. Silver Fox was very frustrated about that, to get staggered off cooldown while sitting at 99% all because of environmental kills and stalling tactics? They've had enough. A gravitic flux was a solution once and was supposed to be the solution again, except they got slightly ahead of the Sombra the second time around. Sinx was not ready to follow up on that ultimate and didn't even have the charge to do it if they wanted. A beat drop saved our heroes from the impact of Sigma's ult, a fact that even a delayed EMP could not change. As overtime hit, the red team found themselves unable to replicate what our heroes had achieved, trying desperately to stay in the game, but that to no avail. Lightning Lord and his friends managed to keep themselves in this match, and even further, turned it around to come out victorious, but in the process, they had awoken something truly terrifying. Our six friends, who were merely trying to have fun, had swung at the hornet's nest and now it was too late to apologize for it. As they rolled out a spawn in the second round, they had no idea what they were about to face. Roadhogs alone weren't enough, the red team decided to break the Geneva Convention and recruited not only one, but two brigades into their ranks. If there was ever a character that defied everything that is fun and good, it was this one. King Rob immediately felt the effects of the red team deciding to run as many stuns as possible, letting the rest of his team know not to underestimate the attackers. Besides the enemy Moira who must have forgotten that the rest of the team does not have the ability to fade. Missing one Moira's worth of healing meant that given enough focus fire, our heroes could actually confirm some eliminations despite the amount of healing and stuns present. Every Elam had to be fought for, but alas, they forced their opposition to regroup. Well, everyone with the exception of a rogue Torbjorn? I'm not entirely sure how that hero fits into the game plan, but while most of the red team decided to back out, Dead was holding their ground. A high ground, that is. King Rob had no issue disposing of that nuisance, and after relishing in that Elam, decided to join his comrades on the capture point to collect yet another one. The first cap went to the blue team, but Torbjorn's distraction did end up rallying the rest of that team into action. Much like our heroes did not give up after losing the first cap, their enemies now had shown a similar amount of tenacity. Tenacity alone, however, only does so much for you when your HP drops to zero. Our heroes were gaining momentum, no attacker would be allowed to retreat under their watch as they collectively shove them against the wall, but it is in moments like these where the only way to go is move forward that you awaken something within your prey. More than the urge to survive, it was the desire to take their enemies with them that caused the red team to stop playing for their lives and instead go on the offensive. Rather than stopping our heroes' momentum, the red team decided to claim it for themselves as they stunlock King Rob out of existence before making a move for the objective. Playtime was over, this was no longer about having a fun pastime. If it was stuns the red team needed, it was stuns that they would use, and that with a ferocity that rivaled anything they had done previously. It was team fun time versus team party pooper now, the freedom of movement versus the shackles of crowd control, and unfortunately, the latter was coming out ahead. But there was one last hope at the end of that tunnel. Matthew, for all of his rollout prowess, was a patient player, he observed and waited for the right opportunity to make the most out of his life, knowing that he had to pave the way forward for the rest of his team. When his enemies thought themselves victorious already, he moved out to do what Lucio players are known to do, being incredibly obnoxious. So don't misinterpret his intention, his goal was not to eliminate, but to distract, for their secret weapon was already on the way. King Rob had returned with an ultimate that would make all the difference. With the minefield covering the entire capture point, Team Party Pooper would have a hard time avoiding it, but that wasn't all. The army of frogs was making a comeback, and they too brought plenty 
plenty of Christmas presents in the form of several beat drops. Every time one of them ran out, another one would follow, and soon their entire team made it back onto the objective. But of course, the red team had ultimates of their own. Rally was a lot more powerful than beat drop on its own, though it wasn't like our losers were beating just for the heck of it. They were trying to buy time for yet another minefield. There were too many frogs and not enough crowd control to go around. Some of them were bound to get value, and since Lucio can come back a lot faster than Brigid, this turned into a war of attrition that very much went the way of our heroes. After a hard fought battle and even more cheese, Lightning Lord and his friends could claim victory over Team Party Pooper, showing that no amount of CC was enough to break their spirits. At last, Christmas was saved, and I rest assured knowing that you can still have fun in Overwatch. Narrating a game of no limits certainly felt a bit strange, especially because it wasn't my own gameplay, but hey, I figured it was a fitting send-off to what was undeniably a bit of a strange year. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you did, do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out, consider subscribing if you want to see more, and if you enjoy yourself some Lucio gameplay, why not check out my episode in which I was attempting to beat drop on people's heads? You know, back in the experimental card where that actually dealt damage, you can find the card on screen right now. Here's hoping to a better 2022, and until next time, peace.